North Devon, a land famed for its quality sandy beaches and rugged coastline, and for its moorland and lush wooded valleys. A county rich in geographic potential. Just a few miles from this beach lies the small primary school of Horwood and Newton Tracy. Although geography was all around them, they knew they were struggling with the subject. I think we thought as a staff that um, geography had been sort of pushed to the back a little bit and we wanted to highlight it a bit more. And we also wanted, we weren't very happy with the units of work that we were following, so we thought we'd like to change those as well. Our first port of call was to get in the geography advisor really because we obviously felt we needed some support and help if we were going to change the geography curriculum across the school. So we had a day with the geography advisor working together, all the staff in the school, and then after that we spent maybe two terms, I think, rewriting some schemes of work that we felt addressed the needs of this school in geography. A key stage one unit of work that came out of that rethink is At the Seaside, which Debbie is teaching today to a combined class of year one and year two. If you're anxious about teaching geography, there are some good ideas here to get you started. The subject can be used to encourage inquiry skills and we'll see the children respond well to this approach throughout the work. Basic learning in geography also comes from being able to identify, describe and compare different places. And here, exciting support materials play their part. We'll also see Debbie develop geographical understanding through literacy. The unit can be taught across one day or over a period of weeks. Oh, Edward, which one are you going to choose? One that you can read is a good idea. Debbie King will also evaluate the unit of work with David Weatherly, Devon's geography advisor, a man who's playing a big part in reshaping the way geography is taught right across the country. Joining them is Alison Aldridge, geography coordinator at the school. going to do is I'm going to give you a picture, I'm going to show you a picture and we're going to have a little talk about this picture, then you're going to do some drawing for me, all right? So I'm going to put the picture on the board. It's a bit of an odd picture, this, because it's got lots of bits missing. Modern geography encourages inquiry skills and Debbie takes that approach right from the start. The work may be called At the Seaside, but she's not going to let the children know that yet. They'll discover it for themselves. Partner, and you're going to have five minutes to draw as much of the picture that you think might be there, and then we'll have a talk about it afterwards. Is everybody all right with that? The opening of the lesson offers the children an immediate chance to use their imagination and thinking skills to create their own picture and then share it with others. Stand in the front here and you're going to tell the rest of the class what you've drawn. We've been drawing birds, trees, sun, sun and... Have a look at it if you want to remind yourself. Grass. Grass. Right, now I am going to show you the picture, here it is, of the people sitting in their chairs watching all the other people having fun on the beach. Did you do that, Ali? Well we done. did the beach. They could easily have been looking at mountains. That was a good idea. They could easily have been looking at the fields and the trees. A very good idea. But it just happened that this photograph was taken in the summer on the beach. And you can say with your starter activity, which I thought worked really well, what was the what was your rationale with that? Well, I was trying to get tease out what the children could, information they could provide me from just showing them that half of the picture without showing them the whole picture and um, see whether they could provide the background of the picture, which was quite hard. What I liked about that was it, it demonstrated a, a, an excellent way to begin lessons with a cold starter mm. activity where you're actually not going to tell the children what it is they're going to learn about. You're actually going to make them speculate and yes. think about what yes. it might be. Yes. And, and that worked really well. 
the next stage of the lesson encourages working in pairs. The aim is to see how the seaside is different from other places. They're given six photographs of the seaside, the countryside and the city and have to arrange them in matched pairs. I'm not sure. When the children have had a chance to explore and discuss the differences, Debbie draws the whole class together. Put that on there, Ali. Good. Why have you put those two together? Because they're both with Got water. They've both got water. Do you know what sort of water this is? Can anybody help her? Matthew? It's the sea, isn't it? It's that big water, isn't it? And these the pairing activity, the description, um, I thought worked well. Um, there, was a, there was a little difficulty, wasn't there? Oh, matching the pictures together. I said that each picture had a partner and then the children <laughs> were trying to put the pictures yeah. together like a jigsaw. <laughs> so maybe if I were to teach that another time I'd have to rethink the language I used. Debbie now encourages the children to combine geography with literacy. They also begin to show real inquiry into the subject and they still don't know they're having a geography lesson. Now this bit of the lesson is to learn some new words. When we're talking about places around the world Places near Lovercott or places a long way away, we need to use the proper words so that people understand what we're talking about. And I've got a lot of flashcards with lots of different words on here. And some of the words belong to these pictures, some of the words belong to these pictures, and some of the words belong to these pictures. So in your packet, you have got the same words, they're coloured so they don't get muddled up with your people sitting on your table. You're going to put them on the right pictures, okay? Big, this one, darling? This big one I've got. buildings. Big, oh, near the big, big shops. shops. Brilliant. Where's that going to go? Brilliant. After fitting words to pictures, it's time to take the children's literacy skills one step further. We're going to put the missing words into this piece of writing. Now the missing words are all these words that we've been learning. So you know what they are. I'll help you with the other words so you won't get you won't get confused. <coughs> Should we read the first sentence then? How in all oh right how how is the side Different. Different from other places. Oh, how is the seaside different from other places? Is it like um, the seaside has lots of people at the seaside? Yes. They swim in the sea. That's right. The next bit says in the photographs of the. I'm not sure that we needed to do this activity. I think we'd done a lot of work on the key vocabulary, and maybe it would have just been better for them to label pictures or something. The actual text of the worksheet was um, a bit complex and also the layout of it. If I'd been doing it, I might have done it in a different layout so that it was maybe more child friendly. It is a, a skill that, that uh, about being disciplined in terms of the geography because, yes. and I agree with you, I think perhaps with the pairing of the labels and the locating of the labels on yes. the right photograph, the, the geography had been accomplished. Yes. Yes. I don't know whether you felt that, Alison, and, then, and whether this, this writing exercise was actually a repetition for some. Because they were same labels, anyway, same, same keywords words anyway we were using. Saying that, the children quite enjoyed it. Ah. Yes. Because it was fun for them, you know, mm. finding the word that fitted yes. into the space. And it's things. quite important to make these links with literacy. Yes. The harder Sally tugged, the more tightly the limpet held on. Until suddenly... Sally slipped and fell, with the limpet stuck onto her finger. She ran out of... The reading of a story leads Debbie into a linked literacy activity. 
encouraging the children to use geography vocabulary by writing a postcard from the seaside. This is what your postcard looks like on one side, where you're going to do your writing, and you're going to write the name of who you're going to send it to. So it's, if it's your friend, you're going to write your friend's name there. If it's Granny, you're going to go write Granny's name there. If you've gone away and left Mummy and Daddy behind, you could send Mummy and Daddy a postcard. Right, Joe. let's see what we've got to now with this. Today I got a limpet stuck on my finger. That's one sentence. What are you going to put at the end of it, if it's the end of the sentence? Good boy. Dear Emily, I have been to the park and been to the shops and been to the beach. I saw a crab from Molly. Very good. That postcard writing activity was a good literacy activity, I think, with, with geographical links. Absolutely, and I think it worked very well. Yes. I mean, because the you were teaching the children quite explicitly the, con the, the, the conventions of yeah, postcard writing. writing. Mm, yeah. Um, and, and I think the children picked that up and, and delivered exactly what you intended mm. that they, yeah. they should. What have you learnt? <laughs> Lucy. About beaches. We have learnt about beaches. What is it you've learnt about the beach? Um, we've learnt about like um, um, some tin postcards to your friends and um, on the beach you run play in the water and stuff. Yes. Anything and, else? Um, and you find shells. You can find shells. And crabs. and crabs. And crabs. Molly. Sure. Well, um, but yeah, I'd like to think that um, if you're going to rock your pool, you shouldn't um, pick up any Olympic shells because <laughs> yeah. there might be one in there. What should yeah. you do with the things in the rock pool, Molly? Just leave them alone. Just leave them there. Certainly looking at it from, from the outside and watching the children at work, um, I think the lesson worked very well. And, and I think there's no doubt about it that the children um, at the end of the lesson were going away with an understanding um, of the environments um, that, that you had established yes. as your objectives at, at the beginning mm. of, of the lesson. And I think that sort of collaborative learning is really mm. good for them. They, they can help each other and I just think they worked really hard on that yes, all day. They did. Oh, and I uh, think they learned a lot. You get to do like um, writing and drawing pictures and stuff. I liked about drawing and the, well, the writing and stuff and the country, and learning about the countryside. I like like um, putting all the words on the pictures. So, to wrap up, here's Debbie's recipe for making a start in key stage one. Use a cold start activity to develop inquiry skills. Identify and describe what and where places are, and then compare them with other places. Develop geographical understanding through literacy. And apply geography vocabulary to written work. Comprehensive lesson plans and support materials can be found on the Teachers TV website.